the story of Dog Day and Catnap. Today we'll learn exactly how Dog Day and Catnap met and how Dog Day actually lost his legs. I think you'll all find it very interesting, but let's go in order. The action unfolds on a stormy and windy night, as evidenced by the grim and disheveled atmosphere in Dog Day's house. All smiling creatures except Catnap huddled together in the cabin, wrapped in blankets with worried expressions on their faces. They engage in conversation, discussing their fear of the howling wind. Dog Day tries to lift spirits, assuring everyone that everything will be all right, declaring that all winds will calm down eventually. As soon as Catnap appears in her house, the creature's faces light up with relief as they all shout Catnap's name. They plead with Catnap to help them sleep. In response, Catnap emits red gas from her mouth. Dog Day and the others acquire a more disturbing and sinister appearance. They and she show signs of madness, addiction, and mania inhaling Catnap's soporific poppy gas, hysterically laughing with the others until they fall unconscious to the floor. Meanwhile, Catnap remains sitting alone on the couch next to the sleeping Dog Day. I know some of you might think that this isn't Dog Day because in the trailer there was a little monster Dog Day who was chasing us, but I believe this is a different Dog Day and that there are multiple versions of the same smiling creature trying to attack, which we should avoid. A bunch of little cat naps, a bunch of little crafty corns, you see the picture. An entire army of smiling creatures tries to kill us. There might be other larger bodies, but we only know about Catnap and Dog Day. Those are the ones we are looking at today. I think Dog Day will be the only heretic when it comes to smiling creatures. I think he will actually try to help us win or escape from Catnap. There were many parallels in the cartoon, and it's traceable. Since he was the one pulling Catnap's tail in the introduction, he was also the only one sitting next to him on the couch as they fell asleep under the effect of the red smoke. If I want to look inside, there might be many parallels. I definitely think he could be one of or the only heretic who dislikes what is happening and will try his best to escape or help us. Now, let's recall what happened to them in the game itself. Catnap, previously known as Experiment 1188, or Theodore Gramble, is the third antagonist in Poppy Playtime, serving as the main antagonist in Chapter 3, Deep Sleep, and the second antagonist in the series. Originally, he was responsible for caring for the infamous Sweet Home, a nursery where child experiments were conducted. Experiment 1188 contained a non-lethal, yet powerful version of the red smoke in his respiratory system. During the creation of Experiment 1188, he underwent two iterations before the final version was perfected. After the uprising of the Big Bodies Initiative's victims, Catnap opened a shop in Playcare until the player's return in 2005. With this return, Catnap was ordered to find and defeat the player, recruiting a number of other monstrous experiments in Playcare. Ultimately, Catnap fails in his task, and in the final moments of Chapter 3, the prototype reaches Catnap and kills him before grabbing his lifeless body. We've already analyzed this theory, so let's move on to Dog Day's death. Let's start by discussing the concept of Dog Day in the Poppy Playtime universe. He is essentially a toy manufactured by Playtime Co. and is depicted as the leader of the Smiling Creatures, a role he took on after an experiment for the Big Bodies Initiative. As mentioned earlier, he was once a friendly character, and legends point to his harmonious coexistence with the group, essentially remaining a positive character until the end of his life trying to save the main hero and warn him of the existing danger. After this, the player encounters a larger version of Dog Day inside the game, shackled in a cage with his lower half severed. Dog Day reveals he is the last of the smiling beasts, implying that all but him and Dog Day have perished. We tried to fight it. The prototype's control. I am the last the Follow Dog Day to avoid the fate of the originals. In return, they are fed. This is presumably why he is chained up, and it may also explain how and why all the other beasts were killed. Dog Day is suddenly interrupted mid-sentence when a horde of mini-beasts crawls into him through the open parts of his body, devouring his insides. He orders the player to run, and, under the control of the mini-beasts, 
breaks free from his chains, and chases the main hero throughout the game. He is then blocked by a closed door and apparently dies, as evidenced by the subsequent screams. It's interesting to speculate what would have happened if Catnap and Dog Day actually met and what they could have talked about. Perhaps a fight would have ensued, mainly because Catnap likely was getting rid of all the little creatures and probably wanted to kill Dog Day last. Catnap did this under the influence of the prototype as he began to worship it after being locked deep underground in the shelter. He became embittered towards everyone and most likely decided to take revenge. It's worth noting that Dog Day is more of a positive character. Maybe Dog Day wanted to save the main character but didn't make it in time and paid for it. It's very interesting that both Catnap and Dog Day have the same scent. The scent of Dog Day, vanilla, is traditionally used for relaxation and stress relief. Thus, Dog Day has both similarities and contrasts with Catnap. Both vanilla and lavender, the latter traditionally called a soothing plant in folklore, are associated with relaxation. The contrast arises with Catnap's poppy gas, despite the fact that Dog Day and other smiling creatures do not possess this ability. Although it relieves stress by putting people to sleep, it does not relax people as shown by Dog Day and other smiling creatures' reaction in the cartoon. Despite his suffering, Dog Day strives to connect with players whom he calls angels, those who must survive in the madness caused by Catnap and Prototype's actions. However, when the interaction ends, the destroyed creatures seize the opportunity to devour Dog Day's remains, embodying his likeness and turning him into a sinister entity that chases players in the Playhouse section. In conversation with Dog Day, he reveals that he is the only survivor of the smiling creatures and shares information about the mini creatures' strategy to stalk Catnap to avoid a fate similar to their predecessors, highlighting the importance of caution. Dog Day also clarifies that Catnap worships the prototype as a god and ends up in jail because of his unique views on the prototype, including doubts about Thousand Six's role as the savior of the factory after the Hour of Joy. Most likely, Dog Day wanted to save Catnap, who was under the prototype's influence, but he failed because Catnap became so obsessed that he couldn't do anything with him. Another theory might be that Dog Day was the leader of the smiling creatures, and Catnap didn't like it, leading Catnap to lose his mind. Were they friends or are they not anymore? It's difficult to answer this question, but let's try. As we know, Dog Day tried to guide Catnap onto the right path, but it was already too late. The prototype has sufficient intelligence, capable of combining basic items and sowing chaos in the factory, as well as subjugating other creatures. Most likely they were friends, but now they are not and will not become friends again due to their differing views, even if in Chapter 4 it turns out that Dog Day survived.